Okay, welcome to this uh, third lecture from the online lecture videos for nonlinear circuits, a 21st century approach. This is Dr. Bharatwaj Muthuswamy recording. And in this lecture, we will talk about the operational amplifier. We'll start talking about it. We'll continue with operational amplifiers in the next lecture. So in other words, we are in topic, we're starting topic two now. And like I said, in the next lecture, we'll talk about positive feedback op amp circuits, which will be less traditional in the sense this lecture will probably most likely or hopefully be a review of your uh, DC circuit analysis course and a very good reference for these topics for these two topics especially again or these two books specifically I'm going to be using this second reference but anyway let's get started as you may uh, be aware that an operational amplifier is a high gain differential voltage amplifier okay that's how you could say it can be defined as there are other kinds of amplifiers such as current feedback operational amplifiers but we won't be talking about them in this course however an op amp an op amp can be modeled as a multi terminal nonlinear resistor nonlinear resistor the a non we we will be using what is called as the ideal op amp model the non ideal op amp model can be uh, obtained using dependent sources but we won't also do that in this course because again that's uh, the non-ideal op amp model should have been done in your dc circuit analysis course so let me write that out we will use the non oops the ideal op amp model the non-ideal op amp and that's the abbreviation actually so write that out op amp operational amplifier the non-ideal op amp model will should have been with dependent sources dependent sources uh, will not be covered in this course but a good reference for all this, uh, good references for further study on op amps are one and two. So basically, uh, these two references: nonlinear and nonlinear circuits, introduction to nonlinear network theory. Now, before we get started with this lecture, one of the reasons why I'm doing op amps first is because this in my opinion this allows you to see the beauty of nonlinear circuit analysis like the beauty I mentioned in first lecture pretty quickly okay again that's the that's again the reason why I'm doing this first now let's look at the schematic symbol or the circuit symbol for an op amp and the reason why it's called op amp to recall your DC circuit analysis course is because or an operational amplifier is because you can use this device to make circuits that do operations such as addition and we'll do an example circuit in this lecture that addition circuit or it can be used as an amplifier but anyway here is the circuit symbol for this so basically an op amp is a five terminal device because it has what is called power supply rails so let's say I label these as VDD and VSS. So usually uh, VDD is positive, okay, and VSS is negative, or they can be zero. But you have to, it depends on the practical op amp, right? For the classic operational amplifier, this is the LM741, is actually 
uh, utilizes, actually utilizes bipolar junction transistors. So these power supply labelings could be, for example, VCC and VEE, because VCC refers to the collector of the BJT and E refers to the emitter. But I nowadays utilize a FET-based op-amp, a JFET-based op-amp. So VDD, so where the terminology comes from, is the drain of the transistor, and VSS is the source of the transistor. And the op-amps I use are dual supply. You just have to refer to the operational amplifier data sheet. And the op-amp I use, let me just write it out, is the AD712. Okay. And it's a DIP, dual inline package, so you can stick it on a breadboard. But anyway, just refer to the data sheet to identify the range of supply voltages. But of course, an operational amplifier will not work without power supplies. And a side note, which I didn't address in first lecture, is a, a bureaucratic note that to these lecture videos, I'll add simulation uh, videos via multi-sim and, if possible, uh, pri uh, videos from, from physical experiments. So let me write that out in a different color because uh, note uh, number one, multi-sim simulation videos. I'll talk about what multi-sim is when I get to the videos, uh, when I get to the simulation videos, uh, will be included in the course. And second, uh, some uh, experimental videos may be included. I have to figure out what is the best way to record the experimental videos. Experimental videos may be included, but anyway, that's later. Okay. Now, getting back to the op amp circuit symbol, so we talked about the power supplies. This terminal is abbreviated VP, and this is the non inverting terminal. And this is VN. Here is the inverting terminal. And this is V0, which is the output terminal. So just making sure the recording is going perfectly. Looks like it is. So anyway, sorry for that pause. I was having background noise as so I was checking. But anyway, here is uh, the non-routing terminal, the inverting terminal, the output terminal. And there are currents going into these terminals. And there are obviously currents going, I mean, current through the power supplies, currents through the power supplies. I'm not going to write that out here. But these currents are important in the sense, let's abbreviate this as IP, let's abbreviate this as IN, and this is I0. So here is the op amp, the ideal, oops, the ideal op amp model, which is basically, the first one is IP is approximately IN, that is, let me write it out correctly, they're not equal in the sense that both approximately equal to zero. That's what it is. And this is always true, irrespective of the region of operation of the op amp, because it's a physical construction, which that is the input resistance between these terminals, if you look in, is approximately infinity. And for now, we won't be dealing with uh, frequency effects. That is, we will not talk about the gain bandwidth product, et cetera. Okay. Uh, but we will get to that eventually in later lectures. And the other important thing which uh, we have to realize is I0 is usually not zero, okay? Now, the second, uh, these are, you might have heard of these in your DC circuit analysis course as op amp golden rules. Uh, but I don't want to, I don't want you to think about it like that. These are, it's basically a model, okay? That's what, that's where these equations, if you will, come from. So the second equation is basically what is called as the voltage transfer characteristic.
So V naught is A times VP minus VN. If your V naught is between, so let me just write it out. So when VP is approximately equal to VN, and I'll explain this, and this is called the linear region of the op amp. So VTC is also abbreviated as voltage transfer characteristic. So let me save this. And then V naught is VDD if VP is greater than VN. So this is called as positive or positive saturation or positive rail. And it's VSS if VP is less than VN. It's called negative rail or negative saturation. Okay. So in other words, if you plot, let's just do a, do a picture on this. If you plot V naught versus VP minus VN, and now you can see why it's called as a voltage transfer characteristic. In other words, this equation describes how the input voltage is the difference of VP minus VN is transferred to the output. And for most practical op amps, this A, which is called the open loop gain, Again, we're talking about the ideal op amp model. So it tends to infinity. And for most practical op amps, oh, let me put this in brackets, it's like 10 to the sixth. Right? So it's for, for a wide range of frequencies. But anyway, so this slope here, this line is almost vertical. I've exaggerated it. So V naught saturates at VDD or VSS. And to determine these points exactly, that is where we transition between the linear region and the saturation regions, these two, these two points, let's call it VA and VB. And notice that in this case, I assumed that VDD is positive and VSS is negative. But getting back to actually find these points, we have to look at a physical circuit. So let's look at an example and then we'll, that'll, help us complete this discussion on this voltage transfer characteristic, specifically these equations. So here is one example that uh, determine a value of V naught. So in this circuit, we have an op amp. Let's say this is five volts and negative three volts, the power supplies. And this is just a schematic symbol, okay? So in other words, this five volts here, the VDD doesn't have to be associated with uh, this plus in the sense sometimes I might draw the inverting terminal, the inverting terminal on top and say the rail there is five volts, okay? But physically, uh, you have to look at the op amp data sheet and figure out which is the positive supply and which is the negative supply. Now, what's that? Let's draw in the terminals. So let's say this is three microvolts. Just throwing the number out and this is four microvolts, can, I can not give you an open loop gain of infinity. So let's say A is 10 to the sixth. So the solution, let's directly, so this is how you solve op amp problems in the sense, let's say, assume the op amp is in the linear region. Assume op amp is in the linear region, therefore V naught is A times VP minus VN. And before we do this, actually, this is actually step one. Step zero could be, uh, we know IP is zero, IN is zero. So let's just put that in. That is put, this is always true. These two currents into the non-inverting and the inverting terminals are zero. So let's just put that in, that's step zero. Step one is assume op amp is in the linear region. So V naught is A times VP minus VN. Now A is 10 to the sixth in this case, VP, which is the non inverting terminal is at three microvolts. VN is at four microvolts. 
so this is negative 1 volt uh, notice that V0 is between, so this is the most important point. You notice that V0 is between 5 and negative 3 volts. This implies op amp does not saturate, it is not saturated either the positive rail on this particular case, the negative rail. This implies V0 is actually negative 1 volt. The point of this example is that the op amp when it's in the linear region because v0 is finite and a is huge vp minus vn uh, is approximately zero in other words in the linear region the op amp tries to maintain these two nodes at the same voltage if it can't the op amp is operating in the linear region if it can't the op amp rails so as an example let's do another problem where we actually have feedback that is this is probably this should be a review of your uh, basic DC circuit analysis course V in V not let's not put any rail voltages here so let's do let's call this R1 let's call this R2 and there is negative feedback because the output is fed back via a linear resistor to the inverting terminal. So the question is determine V0 as a function of V in and the solution again is we first of all mark, so let me use a different color in the sense point number zero is we know IP is zero and IN is zero. So here is your IP and here is your IN. Okay. Now step one is assume op amp is in the linear region. In this case, we don't have any rail voltages. So the op amp we could say is always in the linear region. In the next example, we'll add rail voltages and see how our result changes. Uh, so assume op amp is in the linear region. Therefore, we know that V0, again, based on our discussion, V0 is finite, A is huge. So in this case, we'll assume A tends to infinity. So VP is approximately Vn. Therefore, VP is approximately Vn. Let's mark VP and Vn. So here is our Vn and here is our VP. This implies zero. So VP is at zero. And now Vn, therefore, is at zero volts as well. So in other words, Vn, it is termed virtual ground, which you should have heard about in your DC circuit analysis course. So now, what we will do is we will write KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, at Vn, and then using Ohm's law, because we have a linear resistor, it's Vn minus Vn over R1 equals the current coming in this branch equals the current going out here which is zero plus the current going out here which is basically vn minus v naught over r2 since vn is zero take this out so v naught over vn voila because of negative feedback we basically have v naught as minus r2 over r1 times vn so in other words we have what is called as an inverting amplifier now, I am running out of time in this lecture. So what we will do is we'll, I'll do another lecture where we will follow up with this. In the sense, we'll start with this problem, but with rail voltages, number one. Number two, we will also do that example I promised earlier of a simple op amp summer. So you can see how the operational amplifier does the operational part, if you will. And those two examples, and then we'll do one more example in the next uh, sub-lecture, if you will, which will lead us into this topic of positive feedback. In the sense, 
the whole idea behind positive feedback and stability is that it is a dynamic phenomenon the RPAM model that we are using is not a dynamic model it's a static model it does not have any capacitors and inductors recall our discussion of the fundamental circuit elements but anyway we'll supplement all that uh, once we uh, start getting into positive feedback but first in the next lecture we'll do we'll start with a problem where we add rail voltages to this circuit and see what happens all right see you then